So on my green truck, I blew the head gasket. When I blew the head gasket, for some reason when it blew, it, it didn't overheat. So my heads are, are still in good condition, but we'll talk about that later. Well, uh, this episode is going to be pretty fun. Um, we're uh, talking about engine issues and all things that relate to the engine. You know, um, kind of looking at it. So there's, you know, we do uh, DIY or PAY a lot of times on our on our episodes. Do you do it yourself or do you pay someone to do it? Um, and there's going to be a lot of engine things that we talk about. Um, and, but you know, our hope with this is to kind of give someone who may be like, Hey, why is my old Bronco sluggish? Or why is it that when I start my Bronco up, you know, there's this puff of white smoke that comes out, uh, right, right when I, right when I start it up or, you know, is, is, is my engine normal? Is it just old or is it like, actually dying you know and uh having having just gone through this we thought oh this would be a good topic to to kind of dive into and kind of dig into some engine issues now we're going to keep it light obviously we're not going super deep we're going to skim over some stuff we're going to you know and and so i think we'll kind of carry this the engine issue engine you know diy pay through a couple episodes uh coming up in the future but um but yeah i can kind of start here with how to how to look at some of these engine issues and uh figure out what you know what some of them are and and what the causes are yeah and i think we might be able to save uh some people some money by going simplifying the process and the diy because there are some parts you can install yourself and there's some tools you can rent and uh but if we can explain this maybe that'll help some people yeah and if you're you know new bronco owner you're like oh click i'm gonna skip this part i actually challenge you not to Uh, and you know (laughs) i mean i want you to listen to the podcast but also like there's some good stuff in here that you might just be like oh like you know i know you don't only have a new bronco like maybe you also have an older car or maybe you know you will have a car that might have an engine issue in the in the future and and so this might help you i i don't know how much you'll learn from this but i i think it might might be a good uh a good you know thing to put in the back of your head so i think if if you have an older bronco any gen 5 or older we're specifically talking maybe Gen 2, Gen Gen 1. Right. Um, But uh, first, which engine do you have? There were three engines that came in the truck. There was the straight six, which is most common until uh, you could have a 289 V8. And then they switched in, I think, 1968 to a 302, a bigger engine. It made 205 horsepower instead of 200 horsepower. But um, you can't even tell them apart. They're virtually identical except for displacement. And what makes a difference is the compression. But really? Yeah, to look at them, you know, they, they look pretty much identical. There are things like freeze plugs, and yeah. we talked about a few other things. Yeah. But, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, does your engine match your Bronco? It's unlikely that you have the original <laughs> engine in your Bronco. Yeah. It could have a 351 in it, you know, which was a common upgrade through the 80s and 90s and mm-hmm. 2000. Um so those are the first thing is just kind of like which engine did you have? It's it's either a V eight or uh, a straight six. Yeah, and even moving, you know, like Gen two, three, four, five. I think it was in Gen three, um, between eighty to eighty six. I forget the exact date, but that's when they really started introducing fuel injection in there. So then you get the five O, and you know you you have that five uh, O intake cover that's very noticeable like as soon as you see that you know oh yeah that's that's the fuel injected 302 50 um and so you know you can kind of tell the differences that way as well but yeah kind of uh differentiating your your bronco we also you also have the 351 in there too which that one you know is a little bit different not not too different the parts are definitely different parts you order for a 289 and a 302 are pretty much the same parts, but when you get to a 351, you have to buy their different part numbers. Yeah. For the, you know, so. Different firing order and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Ford firing order is a weird thing. 
I'm, I've never, never understood all the things that Ford did with the firing order. Well, and if you, and if you don't have the plugs and the wires in the right order, it's not going to run. Yeah. At <laughs> so, all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I dealt with that uh, with a 351 that had a 302 fire camshaft. And so it had the 302 firing order. Oh, it was yeah. a 351. You know, stuff like that. You're just like, oh, come on. So, well, okay. So diving into this. Um, so kind of step one is figuring out, is your Bronco, like I was saying, is your Bronco old or is something actually wrong in, in need of repair? Um, and so we're just going to kind of go down this this list here and just talk about, you know, like what some of these symptoms are obviously we can't diagnose an engine so we're going to keep it light but you know just kind of talking about what some of these things are so starting with you know just a loss of power like oh man you know from what i remember my bronco or what i remember the engine doing to now it doesn't have as much power or even are you sure this thing you know like i just bought this bronco and it has no power is that old or is there something wrong what do you think yeah you know it it's probably old just like, you know, it's probably leaking everywhere, but they didn't make a ton of power, you know, and we were talking about in the early seventies, they went from 200 horsepower to 150. They went backwards. Yeah. So, you know, if you've ever had a car with a small engine, you feel like you lost power, but really you just don't have enough horsepower. Right. Yeah. And, you know, even in 75, my, my year, I think it had 120 horsepower, 125, you know? So it's like just... It was, and that's a V8 with 120 horsepower. It's just nothing, you know? So yeah, definitely. It's probably just old, um, uh, sluggish, you know, if it bogs down, if it hesitates, um, what would you, what do you think? What are we looking at? Sluggish could be a lot of things. It could be, you know, fuel related pretty easily, um, could be timings off, could be low compression. I mean, there's a bunch of things that's just probably tired. If it's sluggish, it's, it's time to go through. And most likely the engine in the Bronco that you're buying is probably, unless it's a new crate engine, it's probably due for a rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I agree. If it's, if it's sluggish, if it's just kind of bogging down, um, it, it's an old engine, and, but yeah, I mean, like you said, like fuel is probably the first place that you would want to start and make sure that you're getting, um, getting good, clean fuel to, to your carburetor most likely, or, or fuel injection, uh, leaking. What about leaking? If your Bronco is leaking, if it's not leaking from bumper to bumper, <laughs> <laughs> they're like Harley Davidson's. Um, yeah, you just you go underneath the truck and start cleaning, but yeah, the leaks front to back, you know, and you just, uh, you're not going to know where it's actually leaking from unless you get underneath there and just kind of scrub it clean. Yeah. It's a nasty job. It is. It's a thankless job. Um, smoking. If your Bronco is smoking. <laughs> tell it to stop. <laughs> tell it to quit. It's bad for you. <laughs> That's right. CDC says, uh, no. Um, yeah, smoking. I mean, this can be a lot of things. Um, and if but if if you're if you got puffs of smoke out the tailpipe i think this is when you start going hey something's something's wrong yeah and stand back there while some where your truck's maybe not first thing in the morning while it's burning off any water in the exhaust but see if it's blowing white smoke that means you've got coolant going through your combustion chamber and it's burning it it comes out kind of in a white and if it's black then that's oil that's uh, you know probably old piston rings and things like that so kind of bluish Black oil, you've probably seen that. Yeah. We don't see it as much anymore. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Yeah, it's not going to be like uh, when you step on a diesel and that black cloud comes out. Like, obviously, it won't be that much. But, yeah, it's kind of a bluish bluish cloud that comes out of there. Yeah, I think I think any kind of smoking out of the tailpipe is is something is wrong. Your engine needs to be fixed. Um, But it really could be a number of things that... um, that you just need to start going through. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. What about running rough? That's usually, you know, it could be a myriad of things, but it could be timing. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got eight cylinders. If you're running on seven, you're going to know it. 
if you're running on six, you're barely going to get anywhere. And five, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. So, but <laughs> if you're not running on eight cylinders, it's going to run rough. And it could be bad fuel. You know, yeah. it could be like, again, engine timing if it's just a little off. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely these things should run like sewing machines. These 302s yep. and 289s, they just, they run so smooth when everything's right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, the last one we have on our list backfiring <laughs> that is like the, you know, gunshot going off, yeah. you know, it's, it, you know, when it backfires. Yeah. If it's coughing and backfiring, uh, don't ignore that. Yeah. That's uh something's wrong. It's got to bronchiolosis or something. <laughs> We're going to have to fix that. Yep. So, yep. Definitely something bad. Well, let's go through uh, just some ways to check some of these things. Um, you know, there's there's obviously tools made for all of this. Technicians can check the health of your engine, um, you know, but kind of for the DIY guy um, or, uh, or, you know, go to your, your buddy's garage and grab some of these tools and, and some of these ways to, to just check and see how your engine's doing. And, and some of the stuff you may have to look up online, like, hey, how do you actually do that? I had to do it. Um, but yeah, um, let's, let's go through some of this. Yeah. Here's kind of what you should know. Well, first of all, you can rent almost all of these tools for free for a deposit at most auto parts stores. And then you take it back and you get your deposit back. Or you can keep the tool and they keep your deposit. Yeah. They just charge you for whatever they charge the tool you, costs. Yeah, the price yeah. of the tool. And I've then, done that lots of times. Like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to keep it. Um, but a fuel pressure test. So I think, you know, if, you're, if your car is sputtering or you're losing power or it hesitates, it's not getting enough fuel potentially is one of the problems. And you can install a fuel pressure gauge on your firewall. We had one in here and it was really nice. You're sitting in the engine area, revving it up. And you can see your fuel pressure. So it's just a round dial gauge. Yeah. Uh, not expensive, easy to install. Yeah. Like the gauge that would be in, you know, uh, in your dash if you had a fuel pressure gauge. Yeah. yeah and you just put it underneath uh, the hood and the yep. firewall. Um, compression test. You and I were just talking about, you know, there's a leak down test and a compression test. Yeah. And uh, a compression test is you take a spark plug out and you screw in this um gauge essentially yeah and uh someone bumps the ignition until that cylinder compresses and it'll tell you if it's a uh, 150 pounds or 660 pounds or if it's at in your case what was it 40 pounds yeah d- <laughs> one or two cylinders i had two cylinders that were like oh yeah so we did a compression test two cylinders seven and eight were at, at 40 pounds and then the rest were 100 110 so still old you know like that's an old engine so and, and that took how long to check Oh, 15 minutes. Yeah, and you checked all eight probably in 15 minutes. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, you can take the tool back or you can keep the tool. Yeah, I actually bought a a tool, yeah. So Yeah, and then, you know, you make a note. It's like, hey, these two cylinders are down, something's wrong. So, and it could be, you know, again, a bunch of different things. So that's what a compression test is. Uh, It tells you how much compression the piston is making when it fully compresses the fuel and air. The other test is a leak down test. And what it does is it tells you how long it's holding that compression because a piston has piston rings around it, three sets. Um, And and the three sets together hold the compression, but the ring itself has like a gap in it. So you rotate those gaps when you're building the engine so none of them are straight in a line. And it will hold compression for, you know, a few minutes. But if it if you compression, sorry, leak down test that cylinder and it falls off immediately, you know, you've got completely worn out rings. Yeah. But in your case, um, that wasn't, that wasn't the situation. Right. Uh, yeah. With, with, uh, my engine, it was, you know, kind of the next way to test. It was like, I did a compression test and figured out that I was low on compression. So what was next? We'll start taking it apart. You know, and so I knew that there was something wrong with those two cylinders. I kind of wondered at first when I first, you know, started having issues, um, I was driving and all of a sudden it started like it it just started running super rough and it was pretty sudden. Um, And I thought I had a stuck valve or I had, you know, something else going on. I I actually didn't think head gasket um, because it wasn't it didn't overheat. Um, so I, uh, did the compression test and I just started taking it apart. So I actually, um, took my intake off, took my valve covers off and, um, 
not everything looked good. So I pulled my head off and there it was in between cylinders seven and eight. Um, my head gasket had just blown. And I mean, that much of it, you know, had, had blown in between, but that was enough that it just completely messed up how my engine would run. And had I driven it like that a bunch, I probably would have overheated it and, and done some damage. Um, but I quickly, you know, was able to, well, not quickly, it sat in my garage for a couple of weeks or sat in my driveway. Um, but then I was able to, to pull it off, uh, you know, pull the heads off and really diagnose the problem. Um, now that is lucky. I'm lucky. Um, I had that not been the case. I, I don't know what I would have done at that point, you know, like I've got the heads off. What do I do now? You know, like, um, but luckily it was like, oh, I know how to fix this and I know how to clean this up and, and get it all back together. So um, that's kind of, you know, start taking stuff apart would be kind of the next next test in that. Well, you had said too, after you took the head off, you checked it for flatness to make sure that the it wasn't warped yep. and that maybe didn't cause the gasket to spit a little chunk out. But um, yeah, that's that's the best case scenario is that you just need a head gasket. Yeah. So you know, you, typically those things come in set. So you've got one head off. You might as well just do, do both other. and just yeah. be done. But that was a best case scenario. And you were able to diagnose it yourself. Yeah. 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 That's cool. It was pretty cool. And I got to clean it up. I, I've never cleaned up heads before. Like that was my first time lapping the valves and, and doing the whole process of cleaning it up. I saw the video yeah. that you made of that, the time lapse. That's yes. super cool. Yeah. So yeah, I posted a time lapse on Instagram just of, of doing, that was the good head. But, and then I jumped in my engine bay and cleaned up my pistons. And like, I mean, I just used acetone and transmission fluid, like as a, as a little mixture and I mean, it just ate the carbon up and cleaned up really nice. Um, the the block, the pistons, the the heads, all that, all the valves. It, it's pretty nice. Hoping it all goes back together just as smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> so the heads go on different sides. Yeah. As long as you know that, you're okay. You don't get that mixed up. Or you won't have any brackets to bolt stuff to in the yeah, front of your engine. Right. They'll be on the back like, wait, of the other what's side. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing to check is the coolant system and you can pressure test a coolant system and you can do it one of two ways. You can put pressure into it because you know they'll they'll be pressurized when a truck warms up that coolant gets super hot and it creates pressure and um all the hoses and everything are under pressure and as the hoses start to age that pressure will like burst a hose or a pinhole and um so when you when you want to test your system you can it'll a pressure test will tell you if the radiator is leaking or where it's leaking. It'll sort of force the fluid out. Um, but you can also put a vacuum test on a cooling system. And uh, that's another thing. You just pull a vacuum and see what happens there. So um, that's uh, less harmful to the hoses. You're not like stretching them out and things yeah. like that. But yeah. So those are some ways to test the system. Um, wh where where do you start? You know, like what, what do we like? So someone's having some engine issues. What, what's the, what's kind of the process in starting to diagnose it? Um, and you know, what would you say step one, um, where, where do you start? Where do you look at? You, know, you start at the top and work your way down. It's how you would clean something anyway. So, you know, uh, depending on what your issue is, you know, you check all your wires, check all your hoses and just work your way top down. Um, you're going to have vacuum hoses everywhere. So you've got a vacuum system in your Bronco also. These older engines, are, you know, don't have as much electronics and sensors. So they are vacuum dependent. Your distributor, which is old school, it actually has a vacuum advance in it. So if your engine isn't creating an air vacuum, which it does once it's running, you might not be advancing your distributor and not changing your timing. And that could cause it to be sluggish because uh, that's how things, as you rev up, it needs more fuel and air and yeah. that distributor helps advance all of that. And I think a good thing too, you know, is to check all the parts you have, you know, like what, you know, what is it? Or do you have the original carburetor? Is it the auto light? I think it's the auto light 5100 or is it a motorcraft or is it, you know, like, um, uh, what, what is it that you have, um, air filter, air cleaner? Um, is it the original 
fuel tank? Is it the original fuel lines? Is it the original fuel filter? Like there is so much just to look at and go, what is it? Is it original uh, or has this been replaced or does it need to be replaced? What's funny is if you take the air cleaner off, you know, big round thing on the top, you take that thing off and you look at the carburetor, it originally would have been a two barrel. Yeah. But I guarantee you it's a four barrel now and it's been hot rotted (laughs) and, you know, um, you know, so they don't really need all that. The four barrels are great. If you want to go faster, if you're hitting the trails and you want it to kick down and throw more fuel at it, you get a big four barrel on there. But today we're taking all of that stuff off and we're doing either EFIs or building original engines and getting them back to say 200 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I would say is, is your gas tank original? And if so, it's probably full of rust and it's probably like that fuel probably isn't getting cleanly through your fuel lines and out of your tank. So even, you know, unplugging that and just, you know, like pumping the gas as you're trying to start your car into a cup and just seeing, are there chunks of stuff (laughs) coming out, you know, that are possibly just getting clogged up. So yeah, really looking at, at, fuel filter, fuel pump, air cleaner, um, looking at spark plugs, spark plug wires, like kind of, kind of those basic things. Um, but figuring out if those things are bad, if they need to be replaced and, uh, and getting those, getting those fixed. Well, your truck needs three things to run and, you know, a traditional combustion it needs fuel, air and spark. So, you know, you can replace the spark plugs for $50, all eight of them. You can replace the spark plug wires for under $100. A coil's like 35 bucks. You know, there's a lot of things you can just easily DIY and replace yourself. And then you can eliminate those. As long as you put the plug wires in the right spots, you can eliminate those as, as issues. And I, I always say fuel's number one. Like, you don't have a gasoline leak on your Bronco or in the garage. There's this... Just, and then you can replace the fuel pump. They're a um, little more difficult to replace. Uh, DIY on that could be, you want to give it a number? Uh, the mechanical fuel pump? Yeah, I mean, I'd say a two or a three. Like, yeah. a little bit more difficult. Not 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 as easy as spark plugs, but yeah. You know, talking about replacing stuff, um, you know, on my Bronco with the the heads, I'm, I'm putting new gaskets in there. I'm cleaning stuff up. It's a great time to do that. You know, if you're diagnosing your engine and if you're looking at replacing stuff. And one thing that I really want to mention is, you know, some of these bolts that have been on your engine have been there for 50 years. And now is the time to replace them because it's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and replace this other stuff, replace the bolts as well. You know, like for me with my heads, I'm going with ARP studs. Like, you know, it's just, uh, or fasteners. Um, You know, it's one of those things where, I, I don't want to have to break into this again. I don't want to have to get into it. And yeah, the, the original bolts look good, but I have no idea what 50 years has done to these bolts. And that could even be one of the issues on why I blew my head gasket. So uh, that's just a, a little ARP plug there. But um, really, I'm looking at this going, I want to make sure that I'm not in here again. And, you know, with ARP, it's like you torque them once and you're done. And that's what I want uh, with, with my engine. Yeah, I agree. I use ARP on all my headsets. Anytime you take a head off, you know, you can uh, put torque to yield boats back in there, but the ARP studs are better. It's what yeah. all the race, everybody that races uses ARP. Yeah. Because they last. Um, so you have lots of options here. Can you, do you rebuild your engine? Do you swap your engine out? Um, you know, many have already had a 351 in there or a 5 liter out of a 2000s or a 90s Ford. Yep, 96 um, Explorer. Yeah, so are you looking for a, a stock replacement? When you open the hood, it looks completely stock, or do you want an upgrade? Do you want a modernized 302? And those all have different prices. Yeah, yeah, values really are good on both. You know, you could rebuild it, uh, kind of, you know, do it cheap and, you know, get yourself home and, and, uh, you know, just kind of make it by, get it drivable. Like we were talking about earlier, like just drive the thing, you know, don't worry about trying to make it perfect, you know, drive it. Um, or you can go and spend buku bucks and make it all tricked out and do the, 
you know, strokers and this and that and this and that. So yeah, you, you do have a lot of options, um, uh, with, with, with rebuilding it or with buying something new. Yeah. So if, uh, you want to rebuild it right, you know, you can start with a short block, which is just the bottom of the engine with what's called rotating internals, which is the crankshaft and pistons and rings and, and put your heads on that and everything else around it. Or you can buy what's called a long block, which is, um, new heads already bolted to the engine, torque to spec, and that saves you a lot of time. You're not really building an engine at that point. You're just putting everything back on. And we were looking at those prices. Yeah. And, you know, uh, long blocks were around $2,000 to 2500 Short blocks, sorry. Short blocks, yeah. And then long blocks were, you know, $3,000 $3, plus, 3300 To 8000 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. we go all the way into a crate motor, which is like a plug-and-play where it shows up on a pallet and you hoist your old engine out and you hoist the new one in yeah. and you just wire everything back up. Now I, I will call out here. There is a difference between a rebuilt motor and a crate motor. A crate motor has never been driven. You know, like I know you hear that a lot, like, Oh yeah, I got this crate motor for $3,000. No, you didn't. You got a rebuilt block or a, a cleaned up block or a seasoned block. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, not new. <laughs> and, um, that's why blueprint offers crate motors. Ford performance offers crate motors. These are engines that the block has never been driven. It's, you know, I mean, I think blueprint runs theirs for just to make sure that everything's working, but it's not like it's been in a vehicle and then, you know, hot, hot, what is it called? Hot bath or whatever. Um, hot you know, tanked. Hot tanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not a crate motor. Um, even though sometimes these websites put on there that it's a crate, it comes on a pallet. Yeah. You know? well, so back, I guess back that, in the 60s, crate. they the name crate engine came up because you'd go to the dealer and pick it up in the crate. Yes. And it came off, you know, instead of going into the car, it went to the dealer and you got it right off the engine assembly line. Yeah. yeah. So that's technically a crate engine is a new engine. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, I think there's even options, you know, uh, where for a new, new to you engine, if you don't want to rebuild yours, um, you know, like going with a crate motor, what you were just talking about, but also, um, I, I think one of the cool options is going with the Explorer. Um, you know, you can get a, uh, Explorer 302, um, from, you know, the junkyard for 500 bucks and you can get the harness, you can get the engine, you can get all of it and it's EFI, uh, and, you know, just drop that sucker in and you're good to go. Or you could rebuild that even, you know, and, and put some new stuff on it. But I think those are great options, great engines. Um, cause a lot of times like the explorers, it's like the, the, truck or the SUV around the engine is what fell apart. It wasn't necessarily the engine. So, um, I think they used to call them exploders, uh, <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> but that, that HO it's the 302 HO, um, high output or that was the first engines. And I think they were referring to the transmissions actually. Yeah, yeah, so, right. Yeah. But the, um, the values on those at auction, lots of them go through with these Explorer yes. generation engines in them and they're still bringing 130 yes 100 130 you don't devalue it by I, putting that engine in there. i've seen them go for over 150 at, at bear jackson and mecham you know mm -hmm. with with the uh, i don't know if it's an explorer but with that um stock efi from like an explorer from uh you know the 30250 or an f-150 yeah, yeah. exactly yeah and the, the difference there is that those have different camshafts in them the camshafts are more of an uh, a towing profile versus a car engine go fast, yep. not torque. So a lot of people make the mistake of buying a 302 out of a car and it's just not really cammed right for an off-road vehicle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think uh coyote, you know, that's another option as well. Um, where with, you know, finding a junkyard five Oh, a coyote, you're in it for a good bit more. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm toying with the idea ever since blowing my head gasket. I'm like, Hey, maybe a coyote would be fun to put in here. I'm try. I'm going to try to find 
a way to do it for less than twenty thousand, uh, because <laughs> I don't want to spend twenty thousand dollars on an engine on my Bronco. But yeah, so um, that's a that's another option as well. Well, and you can, like you said, you can get used Coyotes just like you can get a used Explorer engine and save a ton of money. Yeah. Um, or you know, you can go all Godzilla on it. You yeah. can get the new seven point three liter Ford Godzilla engine, um, which we're gonna stick one in. Hopefully this summer we'll be doing our first conversion with one of those and, uh, you know, maybe put a power adder on it. I don't know. Like you need six or 700 horsepower in a Bronco, but it'll, it'll be for show. So that's cool. So yeah, we're going to give away, um, the Tom's off-road scale Bronco. Uh, we've been teasing this for a while. Uh, just kind of talking about, um, leaving a review, emailing us, and you get entered into, we're going to give away a bunch of stuff this year. Um, but this one, we are giving away. Oh, man. I just clicked the button to see who we're giving away. And Scott, I can't mess, I keep messing up your last name, Feigl. Dude, you won a scale Bronco. Uh, Scott was the one, he uh, he left a review and then he was like, hey, can I buy a shirt too? And uh, <laughs> can I buy a hoodie too? And so, Scott, good job. You've, you've bought a shirt and a hoodie and uh, now you have won the uh, Tom's Off-Road scale Bronco. That's awesome. This will be like, this is the smallest thing we'll give away. Oh, yeah. Things are going to get bigger and better from here. But yeah, for sure. It's also super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.